Hi again, this is Mike. Welcome to the second portfolio piece review video. This is another artwork by Pride St. Clair, and uh, I think it's a uh, this is a great piece to review. This should be really uh, useful for people because this image has a lot of great things going for it and a few very key things, a few key uh, tweaks that can make this, uh, this image drastically more impressive and professional. What this image really has going for it is it's a complete image. It's got an environment. It sets a very definite mood. It tells a bit of a story. Uh, it establishes uh, the uh, emotions and mindset of it uh, of the characters that you see, um, and it basically fills uh, a complete image very well. Nice use of color, uh, nice use of form, and uh, anyway, it's just it's just a quite a nice uh, piece that could represent uh, apart from a storyboard or cinematic scene for a game. Um, so those are the good things it goes. For, uh, it's got going for it. I really love the cool contrast between uh, this very angry character um, who seems to be threatening this character that seems extremely calm uh, and is not taking the situation by the looks of it far too seriously. So how can this image be improved? Well, um, the faces tell the story very well, um, and the general um, situation of what they're doing with their bodies tell the situation fairly well but the really big issue the real room for improvement here uh, is the posture and especially the posture of this angry character and it's true for not only telling the story and conveying emotion but also for general layout as well uh, so what i suggest for this image is to really get the entire body language and posture of this character to reinforce what he's doing. He's being aggressive. He's threatening this character. His body should not be so perfectly straight up and down. He should be leaning in aggressively, uh, getting his, uh, his body and especially his face closer. So I did some quick hacks. I don't have time to really make this pretty, but you can see just by leaning the body in, it looks a lot more alive. Uh, it makes things look less rigid and vertical. Uh, it, yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but this space right here um, seems kind of wasted and off balance with the other side of the the image because it's so vertical uh, and it's really not. There's something there taking up the space, but it almost seems obligatory for the sake of taking space. Uh, whereas once you get the uh, the angles to look more interesting. Uh, the space opens up more at the top and just feels a lot more like negative space that's naturally happening and creating lines that are reinforcing uh, the direction of the movement. So it just looks a lot more dramatic and natural. Uh, it's conveying a lot more nice body language now. Um, the next big step, obviously for contrast, he already had this cool thing going where this character is very cool and this character is very angry. So to help reinforce that, definitely keep this character very vertical. Uh, in fact, there's um, uh, his arm there is out a little bit in a strange angle. So the, the arm right there in the original image was sort of halfway between reacting and not reacting. And if you're going to play with this contrast of this cool character being threatened by this angry character, I suggest keep his arm almost completely by his side so he looks very casual about the situation and that opens up the space more in here to uh, re-emphasize the verticality of his posture. Uh, he's not being persuaded very much at all by this character. So we've got the lean-in looking a lot better. We've got this arm and body looking better. Uh, but there's still some things we can do to really draw attention to and emphasize exactly what's happening uh, What's happening to reinforce this, uh, this situation. And we can bring this character's arm up and make it bend a little tighter and really, I don't have time to draw this, but really make this, uh, this fist winding the fabric up. And do you see how I changed, where's that layer? Do you see how I change the stress lines and the, the, the fold lines in the fabric to all point and reinforce the direction of the pull of the fabric? And again, this isn't just more accurate, but the lines are all pointing 
to the center of attention, this, this pulling tension, uh, and then to, to the gritting teeth and the face of this character. And then ideally, the, uh, the character's eyes will point directly to the calm face and the eyes of this character. Uh, so those are the really big things, is, is keep body language in mind. Make sure your figures uh, are not stiff unless there's a very specific reason they're stiff. And especially if uh, there's a lot going on emotionally, try to figure out how the body language and general posture uh, of the body can reinforce that. Another part of this image that can improve quite drastically with some simple tweaks is uh, the face of this character here. And I've seen this problem a lot in dealing with uh, facial expressions with exposed teeth or open mouths, especially uh, when the head is rotated back a bit. And that is that uh, the artist can really start to lose uh, their sense of the actual anatomy of the skull and what the face should be doing. And in this case, what I'm talking about is uh, this tendency or habit that artists have to, to keep everything uh, sort of the same length as though they were drawing a calm face, and they end up with a very long face that starts to get to look like a horse face. So uh, in this case, what I would recommend is keep in mind when someone is exposing their teeth, it's the top lip that moves out out of the way. Quite a bit so this mouth should be quite a bit higher up which is going to make a lot of room to bring the lip up here and not have to bring the the chin so low and that's going to allow us to also um, bring back some kind of jawline because it just became let me turn off this layer so you can see it just became this sort of long subtly curved line from the back of the ear to the chin there's no real jawline anymore so um, by paying attention to the fact that exposing the teeth requires the top lip moving uh, up as well and uh, when someone is um, especially growling or screaming or something their nose might uh, crinkle up a bit too uh, so it seems slightly shorter so these are the ways uh, to keep in mind the actual skeletal structure you have the the actual skull here at the top of it the top teeth here and then the jaw so keep that in mind don't let yourself get carried away with stretching the face out just to make room for teeth and then chin and jaw make sure everything fits the way it's supposed to so here's a very quick uh, tweak I did um, basically just raise the mouth up closer to the nose because it's the top lip lifting up that's exposing the teeth uh, shorten the nose a tiny bit and gave it a little bit more of a jawline. But those are the basic things to keep in mind when you have to do some kind of extreme uh, tooth bearing or mouth opening expression on a face. So before I move on to the last important tip, I wanted to review what we've got so far. So here's the before image. And then, oops, there we go. Here is the after, which uh, you can see the, uh, the body language. It's much more dramatic and much more true to the situation. Uh, it creates much more angles pointing to the focal point of interest over here, as does the, uh, the changed uh, crease lines in the fabric that's being pulled toward the fist. Uh, and now we have an even greater contrast between the angry character and the calm character. Uh, so, and we do have some improved anatomy um, uh, here in, the, in the, the skull structure of the face. The face is no longer distorted from the uh, from the facial expression uh, but next we're going to cover something very different about this image but I need to prepare for it so I'll be back in just a second or two